Launch RockWorks 17 and select the Project Folder Create New Project option. Enter the name for your site. We'll call this one Aggregate Quarry 5. Select the desired coordinate system and depth units. Use the Windows File Manager to copy your LAS files into the project folder. Select the Borehole Manager, File, Import, LAS, Multiple Files option. These LAS files don't have any embedded borehole IDs, so we'll select the File Name option. Click the Scan LAS Files button and you will be presented with a list of the LAS files and a summary of their contents. Click the OK button and select the data that is to be imported. In this example, we'll select the gamma data. After a few seconds, the borehole names will appear in the borehole list. The gamma data for each of the boreholes will be listed within the pData table. Given that these LAS files do not have any coordinate or elevation data, the locations and color elevations for all seven boreholes are set to zero. At this point, we could manually type in the missing information, but let's import it from an Excel spreadsheet instead. Here's an Excel spreadsheet that contains the borehole coordinates and color elevations. In the next step, will import this data into the RockWorks Borehole Database. Select the Borehole Manager, File, Import, Excel, Single Tables, Excel to Locations option. You will first be prompted to back up your database. This is always a good idea, so just do it. Select the Excel file that has the borehole coordinate and collar elevation information. Select the borehole table into which the data is to be imported. In this case, that would be the location table. The data coordinates options are only used if we want to convert our input coordinates or units during the import. In this example, they're the same, so we'll skip this step. Here's where we essentially map what goes where. In this case, we're sending the data in the spreadsheet file titled Borehole to the RockWorks location field called Name. Given that the easting, northing, and elevations have the same name in both the Excel spreadsheet and the RockWorks database, the links have been automatically set and we're ready to start the import. Click on the Update Existing Record and the Finish button. 
a warning will appear because the program is overriding the zeros with the information in the spreadsheet. Select the update option and then click the apply for any remaining duplicate boreholes option. Answer yes to the next dialog that asks if you want the program to automatically update the project dimensions. Select the scan boreholes option and follow the directions. The project dimensions now encompass the imported boreholes. But there's one more step. Notice that the TDs or total depths need to be set. Although you could do this by hand, there's a better way. Select the Edit Adjust Total Depths option. Follow the directions and click the Process button. The total depth for each borehole will now be based on the gamma data. Now, let's select the Map Borehole Locations option to see if the boreholes have been located correctly and to create a surface topography map based on the borehole elevations. There are too many mapping options to describe within this video, so we encourage you to experiment with different settings to get just the map that you want. Let's use the gamma logs to pick out stratigraphy by selecting the strip logs pick stratigraphic contacts option. Click on the 2D strip log designer tab and set the P data column number 1 to the gamma column. Click on the section selection map and select the boreholes and sequence for the section. In order to correlate the stratigraphy from the e-logs, we must first define the stratigraphic units. Do this by clicking on the stratigraphy option and filling in the stratigraphy table. Upon completion, the stratigraphic units will be listed along the right side of the Stratigraphy Picker dialog. Now comes the fun part. Click on a stratigraphic unit within the list and then use the cursor to identify the contacts within the e-logs. As you make the picks, the program will fill in the correlations and add this information to the database. To model these picks, select the Stratigraphy Model option. As with the Borehole Location Map program, we're not going to go into the details of stratigraphic modeling. Instead, we encourage you to experiment with the many options, watch some of our other videos, or check out the online user manual. Next, we'll create a gamma block model by selecting the PData model option. We start by telling the program which PData track to model and the name of the file in which to store this model. Once the model has been displayed, we can render values below a threshold to be transparent. As this threshold is adjusted, the program will display the volume of material that exceeds the cutoff. Finally, 
Let's generate a preliminary extraction plan for materials with a gamma value that exceeds a specified threshold by selecting the Utilities Volumetrics Extract Solid option. Enter the name of the ground surface model, which was automatically created when we made the stratigraphic model, the name of the block model that was created based on the gamma values, the cutoff value for material to be removed, the maximum slope angle for the excavation, the slope to mass density conversion factor, and play with some other variables that you might be interested in. The output from this program consists of a report which includes the volume and mass of material that can be extracted based on the specified limitations, the amount of non-ore or contaminant that must be removed, and the final stripping ratio. The graphical output includes a benched pit model and the portion of the block model that can be extracted given the limiting parameters defined within the input menu. Thanks for watching.